Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. I'm really excited about this video because I'm finally going to be showing you all of my 100 painted Pantone postcards. For over a year now, I've been working on this challenge that was originally started by Big Blue Tang on Instagram. And the idea of the challenge is taking these Pantone postcards that have the color in them and painting on top of them using that color as an inspiration. The person who is behind this challenge, Big Blue Tang, often has this 30 day challenges where she encourages people to join and paint 30 days themselves and that really inspired me to start this challenge of my own. Just quickly before we move into looking at the postcards, I just want to mention that all of my process videos of these paintings are uploaded on my TikTok and Instagram so if you'd like to see them, both links are in the description. Another thing is that I will include the color swatch to the corner of the video with each of the cards so you can see what color the card actually is. Keep in mind that the colors are not accurate so if you can't see it in the card at all, it might just look slightly different. I will also have a link to these cards and my paints that I used as an affiliate links below. But now that you know what this challenge is all about, let's start looking at the paintings that I actually made. So we're starting with a little bit of a weird collection of paintings, I would say, because at this point in May 2021, I wasn't that familiar with my own painting skills and I just didn't really know what I like to paint. So I think this is a weird one to start on, but I painted this desert landscape and I basically failed at everything that I was trying to do because I just completely covered the color and I was also using white gesso instead of clear and it kind of stained the whole painting and things just didn't work but that's usually how challenges start right after the first day i wanted to paint something more familiar and i chose a flower field but i can definitely see that i was really new to painting i had never done a challenge like this and i felt like every kind of painting that i did was almost like a practice painting because challenges like these are really different from just painting sometimes whatever you want to because you really have to think about the color and just finding the right mindset for a challenge like this so next I painted some lemons and leaves and these were actually my favorite paintings at the time, like this was my best work. And of course now, over a year later, I can look at this and see a lot of things that I would have done differently and some things that are a bit off, especially on the lemon one. But yeah, it's definitely interesting to go back and see your old art and just, you know, notice the huge change that you wouldn't probably be able to see otherwise. So yeah, these were one of my favorite paintings, but definitely not anymore. <laughs> and by the way, I want to say that if I sound kind of negative about my own art, I just want to say that this comes from a healthy place. I don't think about this version of me badly. And if you are at this point in your art journey, I think you are an amazing person and I applaud you for continuing to paint. But for me, I think it's important to sometimes look at my own art more critically, even though I like to often keep my art more fun and not too serious. I think it will just help me move forward and be better if I can also look at my art and see what's wrong with it. And here you can see how the white gesso that I used in my cards affected how the paintings look in the end. It's a little bit streaky and it has stained the surface of the postcards. And later on I switched to clear gesso which of course helped me a lot and I haven't had any problems like that after that. When I look back at this time when I was painting, I can definitely see how my style was a lot more messy and of the details were a lot less defined, especially in this beach water painting. You can see that some of the colors that I added into this, or the white especially, is really transparent and the lines just aren't sharp. So that's interesting to also notice that maybe I was in a hurry and I just didn't feel like painting for that long of a time. I don't know. <laughs> This first 30 day Pantone challenge actually took me almost six months to make and I had a little bit of a break at this point and I feel like when I came back from my break I was definitely in a better mindset for these paintings and you can definitely see the change as well and all of the paintings are going to be much nicer from now on. <laughs> So this flower field cabin painting was definitely one where I think I mastered that detailed look after my more messy paintings, which was a great thing. 
And I think those kinds of successes really shaped the way that I do art now because I started going for this a little bit more realistic art style. For example, this orange painting was one where I really tried to, for the first time, achieve a realistic look and I think it turned out really nice. I was so proud of this at the time and I still really love it. So this strawberry painting was again one where I found out a new love for a painting subject because I started loving painting these close-up pictures of food and yeah I think this turned out really pretty and more realistic than what I thought. So this definitely fueled my love for these kinds of paintings that you will see a lot more when we go forward. People always ask me where I get the inspiration for these paintings that I do and sadly for these 30 first ones I ended up using Pinterest and I have used it in the past overall and I say sadly because I don't want to do that anymore because I feel like the people that actually own the photos that are shared on Pinterest don't usually even know that their photos are in the platform and they don't get any credit and I don't want to... Uh, be a part of that anymore. I want to use platforms such as Unsplash which are great for using reference photos with a permission and you know Unsplash is a great place to find reference photos so I would highly recommend using that because for example I don't think I would ever turn these first ones into prints now because I've used Pinterest photos as my reference. So yeah that's something for you to think about. But back to the actual painting. So I want to talk a little bit about the base color in the postcard. So I personally try to include it as much as I could for each painting. And sometimes I, for example, included it into the background. So for example, the sky or just the background for the painting. And sometimes I wanted to include it in the actual elements that I was making on top of the postcard. And it was a little bit tricky including the color in some of them, I have to say, because the texture in the card is of course is a lot different from the actual paints on the top so I had to always blend the color more to the base color and that sometimes covered it a little bit. But I also had to remind myself that if I actually want to complete this challenge and paint for so many days in a row I have to give myself some freedom and I cannot stress about that too much so whenever I covered the base color a little bit too much I didn't really care about it. I was like, okay, well, I just painted something pretty and I'm fine with not fully going with the rules that I set for myself. <laughs> But now we got to the end of my first 30 day Pantone challenge and this sunset painting is actually kind of like a bonus one. This is the 31st one. But yeah, I was really shocked when the time was over because I have to say, of course, it took a while, but I still feel like it didn't take that much time at all. And I had already painted so many beautiful paintings and I was so proud of myself for doing that. So that was amazing. And then we are getting to the next one, which I started one year later after starting the first one, which is May 2022. And this is a stack of paintings that I'm really proud of. I think so many of them turned out so pretty. But again, the starting was at some point a little bit rough. I love this cherry painting. It's one of my absolute favorite ones. It took a long time and I was so sure like 10 times that it wasn't going to turn out good, but it definitely did, which is great. But yeah, like I said, I noticed one thing every time that I started one of these challenges and it was the fact that things were a lot harder when I started and I struggled creating really beautiful pieces that I absolutely loved here in the beginning. Some of them I did, but most of them I didn't and they're just ones that I don't really feel that passionate about and I just feel like that is so interesting that that happened all the time. I don't know, maybe it's just me not being used to painting every day or something. Here's a painting that I did from a photo that we took with my boyfriend when we were on a trip to Austria, Innsbruck. And yeah, I tried to use a lot more of my own photos. So the next one is also one that is inspired by uh, one of my photos, which is from our record player that is my father's from the 60s. I think it always feels so rewarding painting from your own reference photos, but sometimes there just isn't good ones. <laughs> so yeah, again, my reference photos are mostly from Unsplash. This wave painting was really popular on Instagram and TikTok, but I don't personally like it at all. <laughs> it's interesting when you share your um, pictures and videos online and people like the complete opposite things from your own favorites because I definitely haven't liked most of the things 
that are most popular on my social media. Since this challenge kind of forces you to be more colorful with your art, it definitely has pushed me to work with colors that I usually wouldn't go for, such as bright yellows and purples and even reds. I like red as a color, but I don't usually like to use it in any of my art or my clothing, you know, it's not one that I really go for that often. But it has been also interesting to kind of see where my mind goes with each and every color. For example, this red color was one that I was kind of afraid of, but I love this painting. This is really probably my own favorite out of all of these paintings that I did in this whole challenge. But this challenge hasn't only pushed me with the colors, it has also been really challenging and fun to come up with different painting subjects because of course when you're painting 100 photos you cannot always go with your comfort zone and you have to paint something that you haven't done before. And so many of these were ones that I have never painted before. I actually just went to Unsplash and liked a lot of photos that I felt like had one prominent color in them and what I thought that I could use in this challenge. And whenever I took a card and I didn't know what to paint on it, I could just easily go to my Unsplash liked photos and choose a painting that I could do in it. And that's the kind of little prepping that I did with this challenge. I didn't really plan anything ahead other than looking at the photos, so I would highly recommend you to do that at least if you are starting this challenge as well. And here's a painting that I don't really like at all. I just think it looks like blobs of green paint and that's pretty much it. But this Sunset Road painting is one of my favorites. I had never painted anything like this before and I absolutely fell in love with it. And this rainy window painting on the other hand was super fast to make and I really enjoyed it and I think it looks really pretty. If you remember the lemon painting from the beginning of this video, this is definitely that one that I think of when I look at that and you can see how much we have gone forward with the art skills here. <laughs> they definitely look like two different artists made it, but in reality there's only a little over a year in between these, so I guess practice definitely helps. <laughs> By the way, I'm thinking of turning some of these paintings into print, so I would really appreciate if you would tell me what your favorite paintings in this set are. Do you have anything that you would personally like to get or have in your room? Please tell me, I really need your help with this one. Here's again one of my favorites from this 30 day challenge and it's just so lovely to look back and See something that you tried to paint before but you didn't really succeed and then paint the same thing later and see how much better you are at it because I remember painting water like that once and it didn't really even look like water so I'm really proud of that. And I sound like a broken record when I say this again but this koi fish one is one of my favorites from this set. I just love it so much and I remember painting this late at night one day and I was like binge watching a TV show and I spent so much time on that too. <laughs> But with that, we get to the end of my second 30 day challenge and this time I think I spent a little over a month on this so I painted pretty much once a day for a month. And here we have again extra Pantone, I painted some pancakes and then it was time for my biggest challenge yet because I was ready to paint all of the rest of my Pantones at once, obviously not in one day. <laughs> I again spent a little over a month on these last 38 paintings and I had so much fun with this one, I have to say. Even though I was excited to start this challenge, I was really scared because I had saved the worst for last with my colors. I had so many neon greens and yellows, I was horrified, but luckily I of course painted them, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> Here's something that I worked so many hours on, but it didn't really turn out that pretty in the end. I had to almost like give up because it was just taking way too long. Again, the start for this challenge was a bit rough. I don't really love any of these paintings that I made here. I just don't really feel attached to any of the paintings that I made here in the beginning and I don't really know where that comes from with each of these challenges, but yeah, the best ones seem to be in the middle or in the end for me. 
Another thing that I was really struggling with in this challenge was making gradients because of course when you are painting gradients you would normally mix two colors together and two paints together but in this instance I had to blend one color to the base of the postcard and that didn't really work out nicely and I don't know why I tried it out so many times because it never worked but I, I kept trying. Now we're finally getting to the ones that I actually really like. So here I just basically covered most of the background because I just didn't like the color at all, but I really like the painting. And I've also painted sunflowers so many times, but I just didn't really know what else to paint on a yellow pantone at this point. I really love this painting. It's definitely, again, one of my favorites from this whole collection. I love the contrast in this and it's just so mesmerizing, in my opinion. I was so sure that I was going to ruin this painting when I started, but I'm so happy to see that the flower turned out so pretty and, again, one of my favorites. And I mean, this one is too. There's so many good ones here. I was on a roll, for sure. I love this painting as well, but I'm just so sad that the pie on the top didn't turn out as pretty as the one on the bottom. You might recognize this one because this is the Pantone that I used as an inspiration for my October weeklies in my bullet journal. I just love this painting so much, but I actually think this turned out a lot better than the painting that I made after that. So now that we don't have that many paintings left anymore, I just quickly want to talk about this challenge a little bit more and hype it up to you. I think painting these Pantone paintings has been the most important thing that has ever happened to me in my art journey. Painting every day and doing some sort of art is so good for you, not only for your art skills, but also your mental health. We all know that there's horrific things happening in the world right now and being able to just focus on something completely different by just creating for even just like half an hour per day means a lot to all of us. Painting is my favorite hobby for a reason, and I know this might sound like a cliche, and if you don't feel like you are that interested in painting, this might not be a thing for you. But every time that I paint and create something, I easily can de-stress. I think painting just filters out all of the bad things happening in my life and in the world for me. So I would highly recommend you to try out some sort of painting challenge. I don't think you have to try out this challenge. I know that this might be restricting to some people and it was definitely for me too. But at least find some time for creativity in your life and maybe things will start to get easier or you might find a new hobby for yourself. Another thing that I found from this challenge was the skill to use color in a more creative way and maybe you can see it in these paintings but I definitely feel much more confident in using color in my art because yeah, as we saw from the start of this challenge, I feel like there wasn't really that much character in my art style. I don't know if I'm the only one who sees it, but now that I look back at my own art from the beginning of this challenge, I can definitely see how I didn't have any sort of style. I don't think I have that big of a painting style to this day either, but at least I feel like these paintings look like they were made by me. As you can see, we had a lot of purples and oranges and greens, like I said. Purples were also one of those hard color choices that I was struggling with, but I'm happy that I found ways to use it. This was one of my least favorite paintings. I mean, it didn't turn out bad, but I just hated this color with all of my life. I'm so sorry. And I just tried to find a way to use it in a way that it didn't have a big part in the finished piece. This was my first time painting Northern Lights and I love this painting so much. I am so happy with how it turned out. So if you would like to have a painting tutorial on Northern Lights, I would be happy to film one of those this winter. 
but now we only have three more left and i really like all of these three that i have left i actually struggled with the last one quite a bit and you will see it soon i mean you won't see it in the finished piece because i covered most of it up I was meaning to paint a pie instead of a coffee cup, but it didn't turn out pretty, so I ended up just covering all of it. <laughs> but that is it for all of my Pantone paintings. I'm seriously so proud of myself for finishing all of those 100 paintings in a little over a year. I am so happy that you decided to tune in for this video, and please tell me your favorites again in the comments. This journey taught me a lot and I think I will absolutely do it in the future as well when I have more time for that. And I have actually already bought my new 50 postcard set, which I think I will start in the next couple of months if I have time for that. But remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up and leave your favorite green emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye.